Hi everyone, this is Igor from hdhead.com and in this Avid DS tutorial I will show you how to customize keys on your Intuos Wacom tablet so you can speed up certain repetitive motions in Avid DS. To begin, we'll go to Start Menu, Control Panel, Wacom Tablet Properties, which takes us into uh, the Properties panel where we adjust all the different things for Wacom tablet. If you take a look at the Intuos tablets, you'll see that the left and the right side of the, of the larger tablets, and in, in, in case of smaller tablets, just the left side, has these buttons and a touch strip that can be configured to suit your needs. Back in the tablet properties, uh, the application strip determines what these changes will apply to. If we, if we select all, which is selected by default and there's nothing else in here, Anything we do to customize the tablet will apply to all of your Windows applications. But if you want your customizations to apply only to Avid DS, you have to add Avid DS to this application list. So I'll click on plus, and because Avid DS is running currently, it's available right here, DS. If, if DS were closed at the time you were setting this up, you could browse for it, look for ds.exe file in your program files. But since it's open and running, we select that and click on OK and now it's in the uh, in our application list so make sure it's selected there's a blue frame around it and uh, first thing we'll do is we'll go to functions and those are the keys that are on the left and the right side of the tablet by default I believe these are the default settings uh, this tall key is set up as left keyboard cursor uh, keystroke the small button is set up as right uh, this button with a little indentation is set up as Alt modifier and the bottom one is set up as Space. So out of this default selection your left, right and Space already work in DS straight out of the box. So here's a little uh, sequence, a couple of clips and if I click on the left key we're moving to the left, click on the right key we're moving to the right and if I push the bottom key which is a Space the clip plays back and stops when I push it again. So that's great but let's do some Avid DS specific tasks, for example uh, marking in and out which can be normally achieved by clicking on this key here or here. Uh, we can also program that into the Wacom tablet so you don't have to hunt for a little button uh, on the screen. So we'll go back to the control panel and actually that's already open. We don't need this, just the Wacom tablet properties and uh, we'll select this uh, unused indented button as the as your mark in and out. Uh, instead of modifier I will select keystroke and uh, the keystroke for the uh, mark in and out is shift slash which is actually a question mark on the keyboard so I hold shift and question mark and there we go. Click on OK and it's already named mark in and out because that's, that's how I used it last time but you can name this keystroke into, you can give it any name you want. Click on OK, go back to DS, and if I select the clip and push the button on the Wacom tablet, there's our in and out mark. Here's another thing we can try. There's a, a slip feature that I use quite often to put clips back in sync that requires multiple keystrokes on the keyboard, so it's really convenient to program that into your Wacom tablet. To access this, you typically hold Control key, press E, and then F11 on the keyboard. Now by using brackets left and right, you can slip the clip without affecting any clips before or after, so you're not knocking anything out of sync except for moving the, uh, the clip within its anchored ins and outs. So to program that into the tablet keys, make sure DS is selected. I will um, use the, let's see, uh, it really doesn't matter what you map where, you know, it's just a, a matter of your personal preference, but uh, I'm going to use this one o'clock button here as my control E key, so I'll go to keystroke and we'll delete the previous selection there. You may have noticed you have to use delete key because whatever you type including delete or backspace will also be mapped onto the key. So the only way to delete is really by clicking on the delete button. Um, so we go control E and F11. Okay and we'll call this slip. 
and uh, this tall key I'm going to map as my left bracket and the key with an indentation I'm going to map that as my right bracket. Go back to DS and now if I click on the uh, top right key it puts the clip in the slip mode and the tall key is slipping it to the left and the other key is slipping it to the right. So this really speeds up the process if you have a lot of clips on the timeline that you have to check sync and, uh, and, and slip them because you can use your left hand to move along the timeline and then when you see something that's out of sync you just select it, push the button and use these keys. And if you go back to the Wacom tablet properties you'll notice that the left side and the right side of the tablet if you have a larger tablet with two sets of keys uh, are, they're completely independent of each other so you can you can set up whether you're left handed or right handed or if you uh, if you just want to set up different uh, shortcuts in these keys you can customize each one of them they're not simply mirrored each one of these is, is individual key another thing on the tablet is uh, if you look at the picture again there's the there's a, a touch strip which is typically mapped as zoom in and out for Photoshop but you can change it to anything else so make sure DS is selected in the application so we don't mess up Photoshop go to touch strip and uh, here you'll notice I already have set up um, certain keystrokes and I will do that again so you can see what's going on the top button here determines which keystroke is going to be applied if you slide up the strip and the bottom key determines which keystroke will be applied if you slide the finger down the strip typically the auto scroll zoom is the default option so this is what you would see if you've never adjusted any of this so from auto scroll zoom we go to keystrokes select right by clicking the right arrow key on the keyboard okay and we'll call that right all right and then go to the bottom button select left key left cursor key on the keyboard okay and we'll call that left and now if you go back to DS zoom this in by sliding the finger up we're moving forward sliding the finger down we're moving back so this can be used to sort of precisely jog and stop on the frame that you want and of course you can still use your uh, uh, other buttons on the on the tablet and there's one more thing I will show you go back to the tablet properties the keys on your stylus can be changed as well uh, typically I have the top key mapped as right mouse click and the bottom one mapped as alt key modifier which is something I use often in Photoshop but for DS uh, we can change this to really anything we want so I will um, select keystroke and type in Z okay go back to DS and Z is zoom so holding this key on the stylus I get the uh, magnifier and uh, whatever I click, it's a pretty extreme magnification, but whatever I click and drag, I will zoom into. And to zoom out, you uh, select Z, you hold Z and X on the keyboard and click anywhere in the picture and it will zoom back to 100%. So that's just one example what you can do with that, but uh, you could map this key to pretty much anything else. So I hope that the uh, this little tutorial can help you customize different things and uh, speed up all kinds of repetitive processes in, in Avid DS and I typically change these even sometimes several times during the session depending on what I do because it's so quick to uh, to go and remap different uh, different keys to, exp to Wacom Express keys so you can address different needs at different times. This is Igor Rijinovich from HDhead.com and I hope you enjoy this tutorial.